This is the new Power Queen Mini 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. We're gonna take a look at this this time on Ham Radio Tube. So first off the bat, I gotta give a big thank you to Power Queen. They reached out to me, asked if I would be interested in reviewing this battery in exchange for this video. So I did receive this at no charge. I assure you, the opinions in this video are my own and Power Queen has no input to how I make or what I say in this video. So let's dive in. So initial first impressions, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this. The, the packaging was impeccable. It's, it comes in a nice big box and it's all covered in styrofoam uh, all the way around. So uh, not damaged in any way, came in perfect condition. Uh, it comes with a nice little pouch here of literature. So uh, you've got your manual. It tells you everything you wanna know about the battery. As far as specs, this thing, the battery manufacturers are taking note to what a lot of people are asking for, which is a smaller size battery. A lot of uh, the, the kind of older lithium iron phosphate batteries would have the cells in them, but then they'd have an inch or two of just foam inside and it's just wasted space. Let's make this thing compact. So this mini is a lot smaller than uh, other comparable 100 amp hour batteries. So that's awesome. So let's uh, get a little bit closer. I'll show you some of the, the manual here and then we'll go ahead and put this through the test. I have already charged this up. It, it shipped. I checked the voltage was 13.19 volts. I probably put about 60 amp hours uh, into the battery when I charged it up with my 20 amp uh, charger there. So let's dive in and we're gonna do some capacity tests. We're gonna do some current tests. We're gonna check the, the BMS. Uh, so let's have some fun and play with the battery. So taking a look at this package of material that comes with it, you get this kind of two-sided piece of paper, just gives you some notices before use, like put on gloves, maybe take off your metal bracelets, some operating precautions, don't short circuit it obviously. And here you have some different connection uh, precautions, just kind of some a quick starter guide for those who kind of may be new to batteries or just wiring electric uh, things. Uh, of that nature. You also get uh, some stickers here if you if you want to put some stickers on the old RV or whatever. And then you get this nice manual here. I have read this in its entirety. It is written in perfect English. I don't think I spotted a single typo. And here you can just see the product overall, uh, uh, the product overview. Uh, it's 12.8 volts. It's really 13.4-ish once it's charged. Charging voltage 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts. My charger charges it up to 14.6. Recommended charge current 20 amps. Max continuous discard, discharge current 100 amps and max output power 1280 watts. Here they're gonna talk about how to connect the battery wires to the terminals here. You've got some kind of charging information. It's, it's very well written out. Again, here you have the specifications of the battery. So this does have a battery management system. It's gonna keep the cells balanced. It's going to prevent over discharge. It's gonna prevent overcharge. It's gonna prevent uh, over temperature. It doesn't have a low temperature disconnect, which may be important to some people. Uh, so if you're in a colder area, don't charge this. If it's outside in the cold, if it's below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, don't charge it in freezing. The, the, there is no low charge uh, protection on this. So keep in mind, I'm in Texas, not a big deal for me. So uh, I don't really need that feature. Here it goes on to talk more about charging and LifePro 4 versus lead acid and all that stuff. They do a really good job of, of going through this. It's, it's, I'm, I'm rather impressed. My overall first impressions are very good. Here you've got some recommended cable sizing depending on how many amps you're gonna draw, so that's nice. Here they're showing how to connect it in series or in parallel. They talk about uh, if you're gonna connect them in parallel, uh, kind of leave them together for 12 to 24 hours so the, the different batteries can kind of balance themselves out. More on wiring diagrams. Here you've got uh, batteries in parallel. Here you have series and parallel. All kinds of stuff here. Now, when you open this up in the top of the box in the styrofoam, there's gonna be this little bag of uh, bits and parts here. You actually, come, it comes with four nuts and bolts and a bunch of washers. I've already got the two installed here. And it also has these little plastic uh, terminal covers. So if you take the uh, nut out, you can cover it up and you won't have anything uh, potentially shorting the terminals there. So you get extra hardware. They also come with these little uh, covers here you can put on their respective terminal. These are only for storage. Don't put your load on here and then put these caps on. These are only for storage. So keep that in mind. 
But my favorite part about this battery is the physical size. This measures just under nine inches tall. We're five inches deep and 10 inches wide. So a bit smaller than the other batteries that are on the market. And the reason I like that is because I'm into building battery boxes. This is a Harbor Freight Apache case. And this battery will fit inside here and I can close it all the way so I can make a battery box. And I still have room on each side for whatever kind of accessories, USB, Anderson power pole, 12 volt, um, voltage meters, all that kind of stuff. It fits right in here. And the foam is on top and it holds it in place so it doesn't shake around. How cool is that? Now, the million dollar question, because this is a Chinese battery and it only costs $289.99 at the time of this uh, recording. I will leave an affiliate link in the description should you pick one of these up. I did a discharge test with this using my uh, battery tester. I used a 10 amp load and I pulled just over 104 amp hours out of this battery. So over capacity, it's, it does exactly what it's advertised to do in terms of capacity. So now I wanna hook this up to my inverter and let's take a look and see if we can actually get the BMS to shut down as it's supposed to with an overcurrent draw. All right, so everything's hooked up now. I'm using one aught gauge wire. I've got everything hooked up. There's an inline 250 amp breaker here and I also have an on off switch and I have a uh, inline shunt that we're gonna be monitoring on my phone that I'll pop up on the screen so we can take a look at how much uh, current we're pulling out of this. So I've got a heat gun here. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn it on low and we'll see how it handles it. Should probably turn these on first. All right, now it's live. Turn the inverter on. We're at uh, about 13.5 volts right now. So this should, after uh, a couple seconds of over 100 amp load, the BMS in here should shut off. Now there is a, a peak of like 250 amps for five seconds, but after that, it should shut off. So now we're just on low power. We're pulling 780, uh, 790 watts, about 60 amps here. No problem at all. It's doing its thing. Now let's kick it up to high gear. Should be a little over 100 amps when I put this into high gear. If not, we'll uh, just add more power. There's 115 amps, 116 amps. We'll let it go for a few minutes. Voltage is down to 12 and a half with 115 amp load. That's normal when you have that big of a load on it. I don't think I'd really worry about damaging the cells. I mean, lithium iron phosphate can handle a lot of current. I'm more concerned about the BMS and doing what it's supposed to do. So right now it doesn't look like it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is shut off. So maybe there's a little bit of leeway on the uh, rated 100 amp uh, BMS there. So I'm gonna get more load and we'll see what we can do to hopefully turn uh, the BMS off. So I brought out an electric heater now. So we're gonna go ahead and crank this up and then we'll turn on the uh, heat gun here. So we're pulling about 92 amps. Let's go ahead and Turn the heater on there, the heat gun on, 140 amps now. I can't emphasize enough, lithium iron phosphate cells are incredibly robust. So I'm not worried about the cells. I'm worried about the BMS doing what it's advertised to do. We're still pulling 140 amps. This, this BMS should be shutting off right now. This is more of a safety thing for your system than it is for the battery. I want to mention another safety thing I thought of while editing this video. It is not a good idea to pull the current that I was out of this battery because the wires that are inside that are actually connecting from the BMS to the terminals are not one aught gauge. They're, they're smaller. They're probably maybe six gauge or so. So to pull that much current through those thinner wires is going to create a lot of heat and a lot of heat can potentially create a fire. So, Keep that in mind. 
So still nothing happening there. Let's kick it up to high. 180 amps. The heater's on high, the heat gun's on high. We're pulling 180 amps out of this thing. Voltage is still at 12. I mean, it's, it's, it's handing it like a champ. I'm not gonna lie. But the BMS should have shut this battery down by now. So we'll let it run, see if it ever uh, kicks in and shuts off. So the rated wattage of this is 1,280 watts. Right now we're pulling uh, 2,200. Uh, so 1,000 watts more than what it's rated for. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut everything off now. Uh, so that's interesting. So I let this run for about two and a half, three minutes. If you look at the time on my cell phone uh, in the left-hand corner of the video, I started this at about 3.39, it's now 3.42. So three minutes of pulling uh, almost double what the BMS is rated for. And it doesn't appear that there's any overcurrent protection, which I guess is a good thing because as a reviewer, sometimes people worry, well, oh, they sent you, you know, a, a good one, if you will. They, they checked it before they sent it out. Well, clearly they did not. So a little disappointing. I'm not worried though, uh, other than it just doesn't do what it's advertised in terms of the uh, overcurrent protection. So now that kind of has me wondering, should we do a short circuit protection? Cause it's supposed to have that too. What I'm about to do is both incredibly dangerous and incredibly stupid. Do not try this at home or you will be just as stupid as me. I don't want you to die. Don't do this. But I went ahead and bolted the positive and negative wires together. Again, we have a 250 amp breaker and an on off switch. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on for just a second see if uh, the BMS uh, does disconnect it for a short circuit and uh, wish me luck. Here we go. That breaker's not even turning. All right, I'm cutting it off. So that was uneventful, but do we have voltage here? The BMS should have cut it off. And the voltage is off. It did shut off due to uh, a short circuit. So that's good. Now I just unplugged everything. It's literally been like a minute since that last clip. And it looks like the BMS has already uh, turned back on. So that's good. Sometimes if it doesn't turn back on, you'll have to hook up like a 12 volt power supply uh, or your charger or even a solar panel for just a couple seconds and that'll wake the BMS up. But it looks like the BMS did its thing. We're back to 13.31 volts. So uh, the short circuit protection in this BMS absolutely works, passed with flying carpets. So that is a good safety feature inside there. Too bad it didn't shut off for overcurrent though. So overall, what do I think? Well. I think you get what you pay for. For under $300 for a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that delivers over the capacity that's advertised, the huge current draw that we pulled out of it, which some could see as a plus, some could see as a minus. I'm gonna see it as a minus because the BMS didn't shut off. Not a deal breaker for me, but just know that that is um, a feature. I've seen many a teardown videos of these on YouTube. Uh, I'm not gonna tear this one apart because I don't wanna tear apart a perfectly good battery. Uh, the internals look fine, all the connections, the solder, every, everything looks good. Um, so, I mean, it appears to be a good quality built battery with good quality cells. I think they can improve on the BMS. The other thing that I would like to see in every lithium iron phosphate battery from every manufacturer is low temperature disconnect. If you charge this below freezing, if the cells are below freezing, you can and will permanently damage the battery. And it doesn't cost much to put a low temperature sensor in these things. So I love the form factor. I love that they're getting smaller. I love that I can put it in my little orange Harbor freight box. I absolutely am going to make a battery box out of this. I absolutely am going to use this battery in the future. And for 300 bucks, it's hard to go wrong. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd be curious uh, what your thoughts are. So thanks for watching. This is Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD 73.